gotten worse, and she coughs sometimes so hard she throws up more than spitting up at everything. Okay. But not every time she eats. Um, and she's just coughing hard. And we, today she was having rapid breathing of more than 60 right. per minute. So was the nano aluminum that is making the particles so small uh, that it's rapidly absorbed through the skin, through the mucous membranes and lungs. Uh, but also a, a particular thing of interest mine was the fact that when you breathe air that contains nano aluminum, uh, it's rapidly absorbed through the, the mucosa, the lining of the nose, and enters the olfactory nerves, which are the smell nerves. And these olfactory nerves carry this nano aluminum directly to the part of the brain that's first affected in Alzheimer's disease and most severely affected in Alzheimer's disease. And that's the entorhinal cortex and the hippocampus. Uh, when you look at Alzheimer's patients and measure aluminum levels, you see the highest level at that entry point from the olfactory nerve uh, into the entorhinal cortex. So uh, we have good evidence that Aluminum is entering the nose uh, and entering the part of the brain that's affected uh, in Alzheimer's, causing abnormalities in memory and learning and uh, attention and concentration. Um, when you do this experimentally, you can trace this with a radioactive tracer and watch the uh, nano-aluminum pass along that nerve into the brain, and then it's distributed throughout the brain. Uh, you keep doing that day after day, the levels get pretty high. Now, my concern with the, the geoengineering was the word I've got, and when I started looking it up, and one of the conferences in which their speaker was talking about it, they talked about using nano-aluminum, and the reason they were using it, they say, well, it stays suspended in the atmosphere longer because the particle's so small, and it acts like a cloud to reflect the heat supposedly back out into outer space. Uh, well, the problem is it slowly uh, descends down uh, to the Earth, enters the lakes and streams, plants take it up. So then the aluminum content of the plants we eat is much higher. The water we drink is much higher. Uh, and we breathe it. Um, the filters in house filtering systems not small enough to filter it out. So gradually nano-aluminum content inside your house elevates. Uh, and what we know is that nano-aluminum is infinitely more inflammatory than normal sized aluminum. So it's more toxic to the brain uh, once it gets in. And it can penetrate all parts of the cell. It easily passes through the membranes and blood-brain barrier, etc. Uh, so knowing uh, all of this, uh, I was just astounded that they were spraying uh, hundreds and thousands of tons of nano-aluminum all over the world, uh, particularly in the United States. And I you know, did a little research and looked in my own case in my skies, and, and I see these tight patterns, and it's obvious a pattern, it's not contrail, uh, the whole thing contrails is nonsense, you watch a plane fly, and it turns on this cloud and, uh, of material coming out of the back of it, and then it stops, and there's a break, and then it starts back up, well, it, I knew the jet's not cutting his engine off, right. uh, so, uh, you know, you have a, a 747 or a 767 or something, we know it's not turning its engine on and off, and we know that it's not flying in a checkered pattern. And, uh, then pretty soon, uh, for instance, we've noticed lately, there's been none of the chemtrails, or very few of them. Well, did the flight... It's for sure all of the major energy companies find it very attractive. They're, they're investing in it. Uh, the, uh, all the transportation companies find it attractive. The major polluters want geoengineering. It's a, it's a, if it doesn't work, that's okay, but they bought themselves time. It gives them an excuse for not doing anything for another decade or another 20 years. Some figures? Okay, latest water test. Tested the rain. 13,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum in the rain in 2013. Normally, it should be zero. So 13,100 is pretty damn much, folks. It used to be zero. Then it was 100s in the 2000s. And then in, uh, since 2010, it's into the 1,000s and the latest 13,100. In the snow on Mount Shasta, pristine Mount Shasta, 61,000 feet. No, excuse me, 
8,000 foot level, 61,000 micrograms per liter. Four times the amount that is found in the soil up there. Where in the hell is this stuff coming from if it's not coming from the soil? Okay, pH of acid soils is 20 times more alkaline. The aluminum in the soil has doubled in the last 10 years. The rain normal was 5.6. It's 20 times more alkaline. Aluminum blocks essential nutrients. I am unable in my garden to restore normal pH, and that's because nanoparticles are now in the circulatory systems of both plants and humans. So welcome. Even worse, and she coughs sometimes so hard she throws up more than spitting up, but everything, okay. but not every time she eats. Um, and she's just coughing hard and. Today she was having rapid breathing of more than 60 right. per minute. So we thought, okay, we need to. Uh, okay. problem of climate change in the first place who geoengineered us into this problem in the first place are now saying trust us we'll geoengineer you out of it again and i just don't trust them i just don't think that's true i can't believe that governments who don't have the intelligence or the integrity to tell their own populations that there's a problem here with climate change who haven't had the guts to address the issues around the kyoto protocol even that are actually going to have the integrity or the intelligence to geoengineer the planet in a safe way it's simply ridiculous Combat veterans, the longest I've stood up in a long time. I really appreciate that you uh, are taking time to listen to us today. Um, <clears throat> I am a, um, <clears throat> an instructor of mathematics at Shasta College and a member of the Union for Concerned Scientists. And uh, this will be very short. I have a very short talk. Um, there's just two main points that I'd like to make. One is that um, Aircraft making a condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale, you create a condensation trail. That little cloud is a condensation trail. Now, if you take a two-mile walk on a cold day and you can turn around and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's the kind of idiocy, idiocy, excuse me, um, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails when they travel from, uh, from horizon to horizon. Uh, the second point is <laughs> there's a huge amount of uh, aluminum being found because these sprays have aluminum, strontium, barium, manganese, and uh, there's a lot of argument that aluminum is very common to be found, but aluminum is only common in a bonded form. It's not common in a free form, and we're finding high rates of free aluminum uh, in the soil, which is not natural. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the HARP uh, electromagnetic or radio frequency, radar frequency uh, that is controlling the geoengineering materials. And so here's Dane. This is HARP. For those that don't know what HARP is, it's an ionosphere heater that's part of these programs. So as they spray these particulates, it makes the atmosphere more conductive, more electrically conductive. These are incredibly huge and powerful ground-based facilities that they use to manipulate these particulates. Remote control clouds. So when you have clouds. the polarization of these particulates that's sensitive to radio frequency, they can cause those particulates to scatter out and cover the sky, or they can cause them to attract and come together or and cool. form big enough condensation nuclei to cause rain. Again, playing God with the weather, with extremely toxic materials. 
That facility can put out about 3 billion watts of power, billion with a B. Uh, it's capable of heating the ionosphere to 15,000 degrees heating Fahrenheit over areas hundreds of square miles. What they're doing to our climate system is beyond science fiction, but it's fact. This looks like something from a science fiction movie. They also movie. have these ships. That's the same type of facility on a mobile a platform. It's called SBX radar, sea-based X-band radar, for the same purpose, manipulating the climate system. Again, the polar vortex, does that look natural to you? These giant dips that are only coming down over North America. Last no. winter, we had temperatures in the lower 48 that were colder than the North Pole. They're manipulating the that? jet stream. Because they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. They push cold air south. They nucleate that moisture with chemical ice nucleation to cool it off, to create headlines, to make it appear geoengineering is working. It's not working. This is the polar vortex from this week. Now, I ask anybody, if anybody that knows anything about meteorology... It doesn't look natural. That's unprecedented, to have a giant teardrop of cold air in one part of the country while the rest of the country fries, while Siberia fries. This is simply... Um, it's like a bunch of kids in a sandbox... Thank God with, with the weather. ...an imaginable toys... A war with Mother Nature. Experiment. ...statement was that his crumble and whoever's doing this should... Uh, No doubt. I wouldn't want to ask permission to do this. This was not a 